Okie dokie, welcome back to another episode of the Meme Daddies Podcast. I am your co-host, Tank Sinatra, here with my co-host, Adam the Creator. And we got a double header, folks. We got a fucking guest two weeks in a row. Makuya. Came back with the same shirt and everything. So did That's I. That's crazy. <laughs> Everybody's wearing the Me same too. shirt. <laughs> That's Same shirt, different cigar. We haven't even changed our outfits for the sake of continuity, is why we did that, right? Same shirt, different cigar is a great tagline for our podcast. Same shirt, different cigar is really That's fucking really good. That's that just good. took yeah. me a second. <laughs> That's um, good, man. We have Robert O'Neill, uh, a very, very d- just intelligent, handsome Irish guy who is known for being a the best military person ever on the planet, I think, is what, what my estimation. That's what's in my resume, at least. That's, it should be your resume. It should just be nothing else, just I'm the best, man. I got the best military ideas. Um, you have a podcast called The Operator. The Operator Podcast, yes. The Operator Podcast, book called The Operator. You've been involved in some things, but, uh, but you love memes. Really is what it boils down to. I do love memes too, and I love the time we were just talking about how you, when you're alone by just watch, looking at memes and laughing and waking people up around you. Yeah, it's a whole different world. It's, it's such a meme a, war. It's such a personal experience though, because it really is like just you and your phone and the other fucking idiot on the other end of it that made it <laughs> two years ago or six months ago or or that day. You're just having a like a fucking one way connection with this person who never who doesn't know who you are. Obviously, they just made it and put it out there. That's why I love memes, because you can have an idea, create it, execute it, send it out. Whoever enjoys it, do it. If you don't, don't fucking tell me about it. I don't want to hear nothing from you. (laughs) This page used to be funny. Yeah. When, bro? When was it ever funny? (laughs) How often do you get that? Thanks, I guess. Every post. Forget it. Seriously, every Every post. Yeah. Every post. This page used to be good. This page has really gone downhill. Influencers in the wild, I posted a video. Every once in a while, I'll see someone who does a good job parodying, you know, uh, Instagram versus reality, and I'll post it. And people inevitably think I'm getting paid to post these fucking videos. I'm like, first of all, why do you think this person with 112,000 followers has enough to fucking pay to advertise to be on my page? Right. First of all, <laughs> right. what are they fucking making, you know, $5 million a year? And they're like, I charge a lot for an advertisement sure, on that yeah. page. So, no, I'm not getting paid f- to fucking post this. I just thought it was funny. If you think it's funny, cool. If you don't, keep scrolling, bro. There's so much content. There's literally right beneath this post on Instagram, a millisecond away for you. Yeah, no kidding. You could find something you do like and, and enjoy it. Now, do they think you created the post or just you, you're, someone paid you to put it on? They the- think people are paying to be on my page because... Um, I mean, what did she gain? 500 followers from it? Maybe because she's fucking attractive and in a bikini. You know what I mean? Like, leave me alone, dude. I'm trying to run a page here. Start your own page is what I, you know. What I your own. If, now if you, but if you repost someone, they get credit for it, though, don't they? Like what, the, never... Well, the person that submits the video gets the credit because they're the person that owns the content. Mm-hmm. I also get people. There was some girl who was twerking her life away on a beach. And apparently I've posted her twice because there was another time she was twerking in a parking lot. Yeah. Not a place to twerk, a place to park (laughs) cars, you know, or have a nice conversation with somebody after a dinner, maybe, or get whacked. I don't know, fucking, you know, whatever. Parking lots. If you're in Jersey. Parking lots are not for twerking, uh, mostly, until you make them for twerking. And this girl, I had a bunch of DMs from her. She's like, this guy posts me all the time on his page. He never gives me credit. It's not your video. Right. Oh, right. It's someone else's video. You're in it. But it's not your video. You didn't submit it to me. That's why I can't credit oh, I you on it. In in addition to the fact that if I do, God forbid, tag the person in the video, I get I have to deal with a bunch of how much did you get paid for this right. comments. It's, it's, yeah, the whole it's just thing. not worth it. You're annoying yeah. a, a, and I hate you. Is well, what what I about Tank's good news? He, you know the, the, yeah. mm-hmm. the one he. I mean, it's a very positive. It's, page. A, it's all it is positivity, and yeah. there's a reason you do that. Just look, there's also positive shit out there. You would think. No. You would think the comments say otherwise. People get mad about everything. everything. Positive. <laughs> You'd be shocked, Robert. You'd be I shocked. heard I heard a comedian say something about I could say something about French toast. In two minutes, someone's like, "Fuck French toast!" Like, what's the, what's wrong? And again, not my joke. Someone else said that. Yeah, I was but it's it's, it. it's there, true. There's a, another version of that. I don't remember who said it. It was a tweet, like something like, you know, I really like 
Um, I really like strawberries. Wow, how dare you ignore the banana community? And your silence on kiwis is deafening or something. <laughs> I can see that happening. But I think on the opposite end, too, a lot of people aren't necessarily yelling at you. They're yelling at their phone about shit they didn't like. It's yeah. Not, it's not personal, but it's yeah, hard yeah. not to take personal stuff. Well, they well, don't you, think it's a person. You think yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, they yeah. think it's like a, an entity. You've said that to me multiple times, and it helped me, especially when that very small group of people, who may have been one person with like seven accounts, was coming after me, and you're like, they're not attacking you. They're attacking whatever idea they have of you in their head. It's not you That's, as a person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fucking, it is, you know, I, I can't take on the personalities and problems of all of you. I'm sorry. Have you ever had them when, do you respond to them and then all of a sudden they change their, their attitude? Of course. There's like, holy shit, you listen to me. It's like, well, holy you're shit. fucking dickhead. You, thousands of you. You, right. re you responded, I'm such a big fan. Well, now you're blocked. <laughs> yeah, that's the, you can't be. So I'm sorry yeah. that you were a fan, but I don't want <laughs> I'm that. I'm taking my parking lot twerker and going home. Yeah, get out of my house, dude. I built the house. You don't like where the couch is? Fuck off. <laughs> now, did you ever have any haters about like the Bin Laden. Oh, all the time. Uh, the, 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 the biggest yeah. military win. Well, they, you got haters for that? I got, we got haters at first. Let's just hold on one second and go. It It is, I was going to say might be probably, it's 100% the biggest military win in our lifetime, maybe of the, you know, the last fucking hundred years, if not more. I don't, I don't know. Maybe getting Hitler. Well, Hitler also, killed himself. Well, making him kill himself. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, big wins, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a this is a big win, but not just for us, but for the West, for the ideology that got attacked. Yeah, and the team went in, and I get it shit from everything. Well, someone else did it, where you weren't even there. Or that's a body double. The one, my response to the body double thing, I love it. I'm like, look, I shot someone that was in bed with Bin Laden's wife, so either fucking way, he had to come. Yeah. Whoever this dude was, <laughs> he's dead, and he's fucking Bin Laden's wife. That's a problem. And he's an asshole. He'll deal with it. Oh, wow, wait, shit. they were having sex. Well, no, they were in bed. They, they were, were they bed. were, they were on their feet. I would have shot fucking so, you know, shoot somebody in bed with my wife too. That's yeah, what I'm saying. My wife. But uh, yeah, but especially no, if he looked like there's me. That, there's everything like the mission never happened. The entire SEAL team's dead. It's like we're all fine. I'm just, I just, I mean, I'm so the one if you saw Herc as the body double Bang, in wife with my bed, in, in wife with your bed. Oh, I'd shoot him. In wife with my bed. <laughs> in bed with if anyone's wife. in wife with my bed, fuck those. Is that what I said? Yeah. Well, what what are you gonna hey, do? That makes more sense. That's because it, it infuriated you so much. Yeah, you yeah. Couldn't even form was, the sentence. It actually turned me on so much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Herc, move to the left. <laughs> but yeah, the point is, you can get. I mean, hate. Who's gonna hate on that? But so people are claiming it wasn't you or this. Yeah, or that. The, yeah. The, I've heard everything. I've it heard wasn't it him. It wasn't Bin Laden. That, how do you handle that? I don't give a fuck. Okay. I really don't. I mean, I, I, I'm like, at this point, fine, whatever. You don't even answer it back. What do you uh, not on social media. Right, I, right. I, I don't care. I mean, but never in person have I had that happen. No. I mean, no. no. And, and everyone's, everyone kind of agrees it was a good thing that happened. But on, on, on the online, though, they, just, they get this warped sense of all this conspiracy shit that's happening. Most shit in life is a lot simpler than you think it is. Right. It's not that complex. Right. Yeah. Like, the conspiracies assume that there's such a high intelligence level and so many people operating to make something happen. I don't trust people that much no, that no. they could orchestrate this shit. No, it's, it's way too complex. And, right. and not well, I mean, just that bad things could possibly happen in the planet. It must be part of some elaborate plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. it's not just a bunch of assholes running around with no idea what they're doing. We all just hate each other because someone told me to. That's basically <laughs> that sounds what sounds a lot closer to reality and, to that, me. And that's politics. But I mean, it's, it's it, well, even with, the, you know, who messed it up too was, uh, you know, Buzz Aldrin in the fake moon landing. Yes. And he, he's famous for punching a, a reporter that asked him, but he was getting interviewed a while back and someone said what was the hardest the scariest part of the uh, the moon landing and he said that it never happened oh I remember that oh Buzz why do you gotta spin this can't shit feed that. can't feed we bury this because yeah. now the moon's a space station and the earth is flat they're spending millions of dollars a day to keep the sun moving yeah millions or billions I guess we, something like that trillions uh -huh. Like quadrillions. <laughs> and who's they? Who the fuck are they? Who the yeah. fuck is making the sun move? The powers, bro. The fucking Rothsteins. Rothschilds. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Sa uh, Soros. Well, Sam, what it, no, Sam Rothstein. I, I heard another. Oh, casino. With Sam the nice, yeah. With the nice ties. I heard another comedian say when people always say, well, they put a man on the moon and they can't make a, a, a dust buster that doesn't make noise. It's like, look, they are not the same group of people. Yeah. <laughs> And those are ver two very different things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like just scientists. Two groups of they. Yeah. 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 White yeah, the, lab coats. Like the people that fucking were a part of the, the NASA the, the NASA mission are making dustbusters. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be, yeah that'd that, be, that's what better they Better at least be a riding dustbuster. I'll, I'll tell you what, though. Dyson does a great job. Oh, yeah. Of quiet um, products, appliances. Yeah, Dyson it, vacuum changed my life. Dyson should be on fucking, you know, they should be doing everything. They paid you to say that. They should be. I wish. They did actually, I actually tweeted, uh, I posted once, my goal in life is is to be, to, to be, to be, Jared, cut it. 
my <laughs> my goal in life is to be rich enough to be able to afford Dyson products and not worry about it. And they sent me like a bunch of shit. They sent me those the hair thing back when they first came out. Yeah. Vacuum, air purifiers. They're incredible. Their products are fucking incredible. Their air purifiers worth their weight in gold. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so here at Meme Daddies, we are going to look at some memes. Adam and I are daddies. We're zaddies. You're zaddy also, obviously. It means like, you know, cool, hot, sexy. Sexy you know. older gentleman. Yeah, we're, I can dig it. we're very attractive. We know this. I'm in. It's not news to us. <laughs> <laughs> I tell myself all the time, I, have, I do have mirrors in my house, so I know what I look like. And it's not Shrek, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up, Jared. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and we're, we're old, so it is what it is. That's why it's Meme Daddies. Yeah. Very simple. It's not, I probably didn't need to explain that, but I did. I, I know it now. I got this. You cannot over-communicate. As you know, mm-hmm. over prepare. So we're going to look at some memes. We're going to talk about them, and yes. you know, you're going to have a good time. I can't wait. I feel like, um, especially because this one just fucking rocked me last night. Uh, I miss going to the beach. It gives me peace and quiet. <laughs> me at the beach, <laughs> <laughs> it's getting my fucking ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> now you look at that. You, you think can... about seal training, Robert? Does this like does it bring? No, that, up? that is because well, water just brings chaos into people too. If you want to, if you want to freak someone out, just add water to it. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I, you know, I've seen this before because well, one of the things that we do to people when they're they're teaching you through negative reinforcement, the panic will not help. Is they'll throw you in with your hands tied behind your back and your legs together and leave you there for an hour. Really? And what you're supposed to learn through this is that screaming and panicking is not going to help, so I'm just going to stop. And it's the whole, if you're worried about shit right now, that your worry is not going to change, fucking way worried. Do people drop off like flowers? Oh, that's where they get them. They They do, right? That's where they get them in the water. Tie them up, throw them in, watch them. And once, the thing with panicking is that panic will, it's contagious. And people will panic. Um, You also learn so is calm. So if like people are freaking out and I calm down, you look at me and I'm calm. Okay, we'll just if the house is on fire. Let's just walk out. But for screaming, like a prime example of panic being contagious was the paper, the toilet paper debacle. Yes. The reason that that happened is toilet paper is not a survival mechanism. It's just very nice to have. Yeah. You can clean yourself. Showers are a little more awkward. Yeah. But someone freaked out at Walmart and bought it all, and someone saw him and went to Lowe's. Yeah. And bought it all, and someone saw, and that's the panic is contagious. It's like a paper. virus, it's yeah. Toilet paper, man. Yeah, wow. I'm sure people are still living off toilet paper they bought during COVID. Damn right. Oh yeah. But yeah, the yeah. water thing too with the because like that's like the the rip current that pulls you out and people start people drown in the rip current instead of just trying to swim against it. Just go to the left. What do they do in seal training if somebody freaks out with their hands tied and their feet? Well, tied? Well, you don't realize that they're right there. Yeah. The safety guys are right there, mm. but you don't realize it because your your circle gets so small. But what but what happens if somebody starts going under? They they'll let them go. What do you mean? Let them well, they'll, they'll for a minute. We're well, not a minute, but for a little while. Oh, but then they'll fuck. pull them out, and I've seen them resuscitate people. Like bring it CPR, which turns out is pretty easy to do if you know what you're doing. <laughs> but then, do any oh of those guys God. stay in? Some of resuscitate? them will try, but as soon as they kick them right back in, they freak out again. They don't want to do it anymore. Mm. Wow. But I mean, if you can just get over it, and again, the realization that everything's probably going to be okay. And if it's not, you're dead, which well, is we awesome. Have, we also, ha- we have a yeah, you're dead, and the, the training's <laughs> over. Well, we had a thing we would do like two uh, two mile ocean swims up to uh, training's <laughs> over up to five. Congratulations! Miles. We would do these long swims. Graduated to heaven. We would do these long swims. So we're on in California. So there's great whites out there, and we know it. But we're swimming all the time, and people would say, uh, "What if a great white attacks you?" And I'm like, "At least that's an ending. The way it's going to work with me is, uh, is I'll I'll be." Ending a two mile swim with my luck, a great white would grab me, drag me out two miles, and let me go. And you gotta so do more. more, fucker. Yeah, and he just fuck off, and I would swim it again. <laughs> this is a real man, yeah. <laughs> George. This is a real man. That right was now. a little bony for me. <laughs> they don't make you drown. They make you get very, very close. But that's just, well. There, there's a there's a, a test called the 50 meter underwater swim, and here's here's how it goes. You get it. To, it's a 25 meter pool. You get in. You jump in feet first. Go underwater. Do a flip. You can't kick off the side, swim 25 meters, kick off that one, and come back. And you can't breathe. And my thought was, I'll get to that end, and then I'll kick as low as I can. I'll try to get my, my stomach to the bottom, and hopefully the momentum will make my head hit, or an instructor will just bang me into it and bring me up and resuscitate me. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not getting up. I'm not quitting. I'm either going to – and it, like that meme where you end up and there's someone welcoming you to heaven. Oh, fuck, I guess I failed SEAL training. Yeah. Fuck me. But Was yeah. I a good seal? <laughs> I heard you were the best. But again, that's one of those things where I'm not worried about the test that's in three hours. I'm going to concentrate on this task. I'm going to do this as best I can. Wow. I'm going to get really, really good at the easy shit right here. And then the next thing is, well, I guess I made it to lunch. I'll try to make it to dinner. So you're really in this podcast right now. 
Yeah, yeah. This you is know, deep. You're not thinking about fucking what, what you're doing later. I don't even know where we are. Yeah, it sounds like that's a theme for you because it's like whatever you're doing now, do that. Be good at it. Wherever you are, be there. Yeah. I love that, man. My, my son last night, I said something to him because he was worried about something in the future. And I said, well, you don't have to worry about that because it's it's not habits right now. So you're, you're good. <laughs> He's like, Dad, why do you always say that? I'm like, well, because I'm fucking trying to drill it into your oh, head. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm trying my... to make it part of your DNA. So I never you... knew that. It, growing up, it was always, and your parents don't know any better, but they're always planning for the future. So you're going to going to sleep in school and they're saying hey one day you're going to be in college one day yeah and you, yeah. you you wind up living in a, in your mind a place that you're not now do, do what you're doing now my, my father i was just with him last week in montana he's i think he's 74 years old he loves quoting uh the movie butch cassidy and the sundance kid when they're yeah. going to jump off a cliff into the river and he goes well i we can't jump off this i can't swim and he goes swim hell the fall's gonna kill you <laughs> hey, don't worry about swimming <laughs> fuck that <laughs> Oh, that's good. So yeah. My son, I took him out when we were out in California. I took him out to go try boogie boarding. And we just mistimed one of the waves. Okay? Wasn't not a bad dad. Just it's not. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Can't, can't control the ocean. You're going to miss so, a wave. So I, I put him on the boogie board to try and make him duck dive under the wave. And it didn't work. But we got carried by the wave maybe for 1.8 seconds. And he was fucking done. Finished. Like, that's it. Done with the, done with the water for the day. Maybe for life. And I was like, bro, it's just... You get you get rocked by for a second, but this made me laugh because that's funny shit though. I think of the beach in my head as something peaceful and quiet, and it's never ever that. It's fucking hot. I'm white, Irish, pink. <laughs> I burn like an albino pit bull in the sun, and it got sand in my mouth, sand in my food. I'm wet. The water's fucking coming at me, attacking me for no reason. What is peaceful about this? The sand. No one pay, the sand. It's sand. It's everywhere. You, it's everywhere. It's, it's going to be in your foot. Like, you don't think oh, about it. It's going to be in my sandwich. Your house. Fucking towels. That's not comfortable. No. That's not a potato chip. That's a fucking, that's <laughs> 10 or 12 grains of sand, which is nothing, but ruins the whole sandwich. You could ruin everything. <laughs> yeah, you get that in the mayo. It's fucking, it's over. You're crunching on rocks. Mm -hmm. The be that's, I mean, that could set a beach, so that could be life. Hey, I'm going to live life. It's going to be great. Yeah. That's it. You're right, man. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Miss going to the beach. I used to love the beach when I was young because, you know, you're you're there with no shirt on. Girls are in bikinis. You're you're making things happen, trying to make magic happen. And uh, that's I have my kids with me now, and I'm married. Like I'm, And I'm not, you know. And you're responsible for everything. Yeah, Every, everything. The, the, the cooler to get it to the fucking spot. The cooler, the fucking cart that, you know, you have all of... The blankets and the tent and the fucking, the, the toys well, that they don't even use, but they demand you bring. Well, the tents, I need those too. I'm like you, I'll just, I will completely burst into flames. So they got to be set up. <laughs> and then I, I get my wind call wrong. Yeah. I'm a jump master for Christ's sake. I can't figure out which way an umbrella goes without flying into the people next to me and their sandy ass sandwiches. Well, it's like the, the spaceship and the dust buster thing. <laughs> two different skills. <laughs> right, they're, they're two different days. Yeah. They didn't make the sandwich. They invented the umbrella. And you're the same guy. <laughs> yeah, that's just me. You are they, which with sucks. With this fucking cooler with the all-terrain vehicle wheels on it that doesn't do shit. <laughs> it, it sucks. It gets caught in the sand. Yeah, these are, well, why did you even put these on here? I'd rather just drag it through the sand. Yeah, why not like sleds? Wouldn't that make more sense than wheels? Well, that's make, that's what makes a lot of sense, yeah. Well, you got to get it do the, that. through the well, parking lot. through the parking lot, lot though, too. Oh, yeah, that's true. You should have a fucking convertible. And how about how about the uh, the in, entitled parking lot attendant? Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, over here. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me where to park. Okay, I'm fucking Fuck backing you, in. There's a spot right here. And the girl twerking. In the parking yeah, room. and then you oh, get yeah. the twerker. <laughs> I mean, she's she's making money, though. You know what I mean? She's fucking getting that. She's getting that money. What was she twerking to? You can't hear it, which is always funnier. People with dancing <laughs> with no music is my favorite genre of influencers in the wild videos. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is going to give you an end to your story. How I'm approaching every fungus I see now. Have you seen The Last of Us on oh, HBO? Yeah. No, I haven't. Dude. Oh, bro. It's fucking... So I'm assuming it's about the uh, fungus in the end of the world or something like that? So it starts off with a guy on an old TV show, maybe in the 70s or whatever, and he's talking about how the real pandemic you need to worry about is this this fungus called cordyceps, which it goes into insects and makes them do what the fungus wants. It makes them kill you know, other insects for food, and then eventually it just grows through the whole thing, which is a real thing. Oh, yeah. Zombie fungus or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, this couldn't happen on Earth, could it? It couldn't happen with people. He's like, well, it can't survive in our bodies because they're 98.6 degrees. But if it did have to evolve to meet rising temperatures, it's possible. It was only like five degrees off or something like that. Uh -huh. And then you, f and then you, you fla fast forward, whatever it is, 30 years, 40 years, and it's, you know, this thing takes over. And it is fucking, to be honest with you, 
you can almost see it happening, but it's like, whatever. If it happens, eat me, dude. I don't want to fucking... <laughs> right. I don't want to live in a world where these fungus people coming after me just put a bullet in my head. Really. Yeah. But... The flamethrower. But the last episode... <laughs> did you see the mo- last week's episode? Yeah. Dude, so Nick Offerman is in this episode. It's in the previews. I'm not giving anything away. He is part of a gay couple that is like created during this tragedy. And at first, the beards, the making out, the kissing, I'm like, Ugh, fucking whatever. I'm like, I'm not. But at the end of it, it's like, I'm so fucking glad they found each other. Like, if this, if that episode doesn't cure homophobia in the planet, <laughs> I don't know what will. Like, it, you it just. It was well done. It, it was, was well, tastefully bro, done. It I gotta was, check it out. Yeah. It was beautiful. The guy was, uh, it's just a great thing. But you have a, 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 a story that starts off with the sentence, <laughs> a gay guy is a gay guy, and I want to hear it bad. I figured it out in Virginia Beach when I was still in the Navy, and I had a gay <laughs> friend of mine, and we're at, a, we're at a New Year's Eve party. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, they had, for some reason, there was a, a like Tropicana bikini model, whatever year, uh, talent show. Or what, sure, yeah, they're yeah. bikini model doing shit, and and, they're, and they're, these are hot girls. Too. Talent and, show. And uh, I remember looking at them like it was a tit show. It was a tit let's, show, let's yeah. It, but yeah. I, I'm sitting there with a buddy, and you can't help but look and just be impressed. And I look over, and uh, Joseph's over there dancing with the girls, and he's got one of those little top hats that you kind of put into your hair, and he's dancing. <laughs> I go, Joseph, come here. And I look up at the TV, and I go, I go, nothing. No. And he goes. Nope, nothing. And he just prances off and does his little range of dance with the girls again. I'm like, oh my gay God. is the real thing? It's, it's awesome. God bless him. And I'm glad he found the girls to dance with. And I'll just watch this shit. Unfazed. Have... He wasn't. <laughs> didn't, didn't even, like, he was looking at a car wreck. Yeah. 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 It's like a fucking whatever. It's just not, doesn't do it for him. Mm-hmm. And, and also at, uh, at, a, at one of my gay friends' birthday parties, how I, I shattered my, uh, I broke my bicep. It d- displaced itself mm. because I'd been doing so much in the Navy from parachuting to climbing. To, everything was up and always climbing. And the surgeon told me, it was just ready to pop, yep. but it happened at his birthday party when I lifted up a bowling ball and it went, oh, my oh. God. and I'd never been hit in combat, 400 missions. Yeah. And I'm like two silver stars, four bronze stars of valor. And I said, hey, man, we got to go to the emergency room. And he goes, seriously? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you? Right. Yeah. And I, bowling, bowling gotcha, huh? Wow. Super duper. That's unreal. American hero. Seriously, yeah. Robert? <laughs> Fine. That's getting the Prius. I love that he threw shade at you. From- <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had to yeah, throw the war shit at me. A, Na- now's the time, huh? What a pussy, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I, not that I was ever um, homophobic or hated gay people, but I obviously didn't get it because I'm not gay. Like I don't understand how you could be attracted to someone of the same sex. But then a good friend of mine who goes up to Provincetown every year, Pride, he's not gay, he's married, but he just has a fucking bunch of gay friends. Maybe he does a little something on the side, I don't know. Hey, you're but, uh, <laughs> no, I don't care. He goes, dude, he goes, I'll tell you what, if there's one thing I've learned in life, it's you have very little to no control over who you fall in love with. And I was That's like, good, yeah. oh, yeah. I probably would have been better off being gay than some of the fucking women I dated. You know what I mean? Bad choices. The guys at least would laugh at the memes. Yeah. Oh, they, oh, they would, yeah. And you exactly. can, they, they can be your bro, too. Yeah. Hey, check this out. I've, I've, heard, I've, heard, the like P- I've heard P-Town's a hell of a party, too. I, I've been oh, to Cape Cod yeah. a lot. I've never been up to Providence. It goes every year. I've heard it's amazing. You will not miss it. Oh, shit. If, once you're there and you have fun, yeah. you want to go back. G- gay community, except for like the super like militant, like hating everybody, mm-hmm. you know, the, the fringe of it, by and large, are just fun and cool, dude. It's episode smart, episode like, five or four, sharp. whatever it was, we stated that this this podcast is for the gays. That's yeah, it, man. Fucking, They're the best. I've never had every time I have a problem on the internet. Every single time, a hundred percent of the time, it's a straight white dude in his twenties. Every single fucking. It time. definitely is. Yep. A lot and of the uh, issues we have too with people being offended as a as a white politician in D.C. that's offended or thinks he's good to get money out of being offended. It's vicarious offense. You're yeah. like taking on something that you have no fucking skin in the game for, and the people who you're claiming to defend are like, yeah, we're we're good, <laughs> we're okay, yeah. we don't need you. And gay means happy, and they kind of want to be left alone too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm checking that party out for sure. Let's go. I'm in. I got a speedo. Um, <laughs> that I'll not wear. I'll save, just be save one for totally me, big naked. boy. <laughs> this is one of, another one of my favorite genres of meme online is. Uh, the old man Facebook profile picture. A smile might be good. Nothing to smile about in my life. <laughs> Just like, what are you doing, bro? That is the Facebook profile for everyone over at that age group, too. And it's always uploaded 9, 11 <laughs> times in a row. Because they're like, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. They don't, now I don't know how to delete it. Fuck, what am I going to do? <laughs> bro, I guess I'm just him. I have gotten a friend request from my Aunt Mary every three months for the last five years. 
because she just like probably never signs in, forgets her password, oh, forgets the email. Every time. And it's uh, I joke about it with my sister. I'm like, I got another friend request from Aunt Mary. <laughs> it's the same aunt. It's, a, it's not a, That's it's, the same picture. It's not a different person, is it? No, she just can't remember her password ever. <laughs> but she demands to get on. I relate to that though. I forget my passwords all the fucking time. <laughs> yeah, I have like five or so six in rotation that if I'm if, if I did it with an exclamation point or a fucking dollar sign. Then I get hit with, oh, you can't use the same password. Locked out. Yeah. Oh, I get locked out of my accounts all the time. Oh, yeah. man. Just, just when I'm trying to fly, though. Like, you get to 38,000 feet and you try to log into the app and, you know, you're locked out. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Right. Yeah. But then, because the Wi-Fi is so shitty, it's a 45-minute experience trying to reset <laughs> oh, your password. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fucking the, doesn't go through. The email won't load. It doesn't pull. It's not fetching or whatever the fuck. I guess I'll just read my sweatshirt again. <laughs> <laughs> Front towards enemy. Read the menu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cheese box. Yeah, that sounds delicious. I'll have Seven, that. Seventeen dollars. That was for a cheese box. A piece of cheese and a couple of grapes. <laughs> Let's see what they're selling in air malls. Yeah. The inflation the in air the mall. sky. The sky is very high. You fly. You fly a lot. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you have any funny flying stories? Well, the one that I got banned from Delta Airlines is a decent one. <laughs> um, I'm not going to get into that one. That's because that's a, one of the mass things. But one of my favorite ones, we're, we're talking about gay dudes and gay meets happy. I love when I have a gay flight attendant. The dudes are the best. Oh, yeah. the best. And uh, I, had a, I was doing a cross-country trip, and I said, hey, I'll take, a, I'll take a Jack and Coke. He's like, how about, uh, how about a water? I'm like, I just want to fucking drink. And I go, I see your point. <laughs> I'll have a water. You, you saw it coming. Yeah, you saw it coming. Yeah. <laughs> saw it coming. Why, because you were drunk? He was assuming I would get that way. And he's like, you've been on this flight. We know you. No, he was, oh, he, he was just was he was your, literally just saying it's like water. It's water time. I'm like, okay. It was your boy. Because I asked him, was I being belligerent? No. But that's like a homie move. It's like, that's like yeah, your yeah. buddy. It's you your know? buddy. It's your buddy. Yeah. You're good. You're good. Drink some water. Yeah. yeah. At least he didn't pull the wool we'll out of that. Well, I'll try that. He we'll, just went right to dome. It's actually You're good cool. with water. Yeah. yeah, that's actually really cool. That's awesome. <laughs> Robert, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. I knew my name. <laughs> Flight's only two hours. <laughs> yeah, you, you're going to be fine. You've had eight already. Read your sweatshirt again, Bob. No. I know you can't get on the app. You've told me you can't get on the app. Yeah, you're banned. Yeah, the ban from Delta thing is hilarious to me because you made a joke. I mean, well, they they it's when we didn't know what was what. We didn't know about COVID. We sort of knew we could fly, but people were still taking advantage by bringing their like their peacock on to keep them comfortable. All that weird shit. <laughs> and they and and I like I don't have a problem with masks, whatever. And I had a bunch in my bag, and they served me. And this was water and like peanuts. And I said, so let me get this straight. I can I can move the mask and eat the peanuts, so we're good. And I just I tweeted a picture of me, and oh. I just put I'm not a pussy, and then I turned off. I landed two hours later, and I've got just full of text messages. My wife is like, what the fuck did you just do? I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, you're on the New York Post. You're anti-mask. I'm like, no. And then, what? And then Delta banned me. I'm like, wait a minute. 20 years after 9-11, I'm on a no-fly list? Oh what the fuck God. is this? <laughs> I fucking killed Bin Laden, dude. <laughs> I killed the motherfucker that started the no-fly list. You know what's funny? I'm still a million miler. They still send me... Christmas presents, like, hey, Delta, I'm good on the bookends. Knock it off. Yeah. We don't oh, we don't have man. a relationship anymore. They lifted the band pretty quick. And then I haven't flown them since. Oh, I, I didn't ask. <laughs> After that, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, there's other airlines I can fly. Of course. And they're, they'll at least tone me down when there's been too many cocktails. Oh, man. Yeah, William yeah. Milo, that's serious flight, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah, I used to fly a lot. I still fly a lot, but just different airlines. <sighs> but, uh, no, they're all It's fun, though, because I it's taught me uh, I deal with the – I try to put myself in other people's shoes, yeah. and you got to realize that even the guy on the couch yelling at you—he's—he's he's in his—he's doing it. He's living his life. He's got his own issues. You don't know. He's doing his best. But the, the people that don't get any credit are the TSA agents, because people are like, well, I travel and I have to deal with them. It's like they deal with us every day for eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if you, as opposed to going up and telling them to go fuck themselves, why don't you smile at them and watch how fast you get through that fucking that line? Quick yeah. as shit, because they're a real person too. That's right. Well, sometimes you smile at them and ask how they're doing, and that is aggravating to them because they're like, yeah, they also just want to get you through there. I don't want to fucking talk to you, dude. Mm -hmm. You're a cow in a in a herd. I'm just trying to get you slaughtered. We're you know? just trying to cook you alive like the rest of them. Yeah, just get the fuck out of my face. There's eight thousand of you behind you, yeah, and you're all the same. And you all have your shoes off like a bunch of assholes. Forget, we, and and you all forget to, to fucking empty your water bottle, you dumb motherfucker. I saw a dude. Here's a funny flying story. Try to get through. Um, the metal detector with a gallon of milk. <laughs> and it's like, first of all, on what fucking planet? First of all, who needs a gallon of milk on this flight? Right. And why'd you think you're going to get through? They kick you out for your fucking shampoo. So this is a very famous image of uh, Peel yeah. sweating Jordan Peel when you're in a room with two extroverts and one of them leaves. <laughs> 
I don't, I've been in a room with three extroverts and one of them leaves and the other one I don't know and that's me too. I'm just like, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> it was a tri it was a three way and now someone's gone. I hope they fucking hurry back. But you know why, Robert, also besides like, you know, you being cool, very, very, very easy to talk to. Thank you. You're not like a fucking, you know, or like, a, like those are the only two personalities that yeah. are annoying to yeah. me. And you're neither one of them. You're just like, yeah, we can talk or not. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> well, it's, it's like the <laughs> right. point I was making, too, how most people are kind of the same. You're just dudes doing shit. You're yeah. trying to get on with your life. And, I, you know, I'm a dude that joined the military. I see, I see a lot of my friends that are on there, and they're, uh, and I, I'm not talking shit about anyone, but they're always like, you know, like, I got to get up at this time. And when you get up and you're scared, you never quit. And I'm like, what? What are you never quitting, by the way? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, are you going to quit bringing a gallon of milk to the right. The mission's over. <laughs> well, Jocko... Was, Jocko no, he's, is, no, he's a one percenter. He's, he's on a different level. But he makes me not feel bad about myself, but I've heard his reasoning for waking up every day mm -hmm. that early because yeah. he lost so many friends and they don't get to live. It's like, well, I don't have that, so I'm up at 8. I don't know. What, like, what am I supposed to do? Wake up at 4.15 because I fucking have he's, horrific anxiety? You know, he's always been like that, though. I'm sure he has. Like when we were together at SEAL Team 2, our workout would be at like 6 in the morning. He was already at the gym at 4, and that's just his role. He's and wired that way. Yeah. He's a one percenter. He's not a normal person, and, 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 and he, he will talk you into doing shit. Like, and not, not, not force you, but he will convince you. Right, right. He's a d different level. You feel that energy. Yeah. You're like, fuck, he, I got to do something. He's a way different level. It's not guilt. It's inspiration. It's complete inspiration. Yeah. And, and plus, he, he's not only going to have your back. He'll take the front, and then you can take the scratch. Yeah, why don't you fucking sit down? He, no, he's an amazing dude. Amazing yeah. dude. Hard working guy. Yeah. Cool. But wired that way. Uh, but I've never, and I've never seen him out of control as long as I've known him. He's really? Always, he's always handled it. He's, yeah, he just. I wonder what his brain is like. I'd like to fucking. He's a, he's a funny motherfucker, too. You just would never guess because you're too too busy cleaning up the piss around your own boots. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so, one of the most solid dudes I've ever met. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But he wakes up too early for me, man. He's up early. Like that's like Mark Wahlberg level waking up early. Yeah. Well, Mark, I, I have something. I have a post coming out with Entrepreneur. Do you know that page? No. It's entrepreneur, but the preneur is spelt like manure. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. That in itself is brilliant. Yeah, it's just like roasting the fucking hustle culture. Oh, my God. I'm, gonna, I'm totally on that. So I have a post coming out with them, which um, maybe I should show. I mean, I don't know. It's just Mark Wahlberg's in the picture. Wake up at 2 a.m. to the sound of live gunfire. 215, <laughs> snort, snort three ice cubes. Fucking just all the oh nonsense, God, dude. His, his, um, Mark Wahlberg's schedule he put out, like whatever it was, it's a couple years ago. 2 a.m., wake up, prayer time. 3, 3 a.m., like you sit there. How do you not fall back asleep? Is really the is question. Is the prayer like meditation time or is it like no shit pray time or are you just like sitting in Indian style? Just I don't know, like dude. That? Just fucking on his knees. That's insane. Healthy Catholic Boston guy. I, I don't <laughs> know. Guilt. First workout, 5 a.m. Yeah. Second workout, right. 8 a.m. Yeah. 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 yeah he's serious too. I mean, it's worked. It, it, obviously, he's. Yeah. Yeah, I, like, believe no, I, I believe him. I don't yeah. think he's bullshitting. I think I think he's. If really I'm up at two, I fucked up. <laughs> yeah. So I'm either. I don't know what the hell went down. I don't know who this guy in this jail cell with me is. <laughs> if I wake up at two, I'm eating peanut butter and maple syrup is what's happening. Oh, it's, 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 yeah. it's snack time. <laughs> it's snack time to get I'm, back to sleep. I'm fucking mixing a, a, a concrete barrel of Cheez-Its and peanut butter in my throat, almost dying, if, and then washing it down with a Coke Zero. If, if I posted my early morning yeah. routine, it's like, why are you having a bologna sandwich again? <laughs> I don't know. It's delicious. So I'm I'd out of milk. <laughs> I'd love to see your... Your no, it's daily I, schedule. I, I, lo I love the day this guy, and I love guys like that too. But it's—I mean, it's like you just stop yelling at me, dude. right? <laughs> that's Tony I, Robbins. That's you can do it. You gotta win. That's how I felt about David Goggins for a long time, and then he's I another one that's hard. I finally was shit. like, all right, this—you know—he's fucking. I read his his memoir was unbelievable. Oh, he's incredible. Um, and he just—I he, read his memoir and Kevin Hart's memoir at the same time, uh -huh. back, back to we were yeah. back to back. Two very different stories, but two very similar. Attitudes like Kevin Hart's life was. Yeah, I read his book. Uh, you read mm -hmm. uh, I can't make this up. Yes, with getting the fucking show and then flying everyone out and then they tell him right before he goes on stage it's been canceled. You know, and then they say it's on and then he flies everyone. So it's just like so many almost opportunities that he never yeah. quit. It's like really. Well, even the story with the, his mom would insist on taking the bus schedule instead of just getting a ride because this is how we do it. And yeah. Taught him the grind. And that's some serious shit. 100%. And then David Goggins is next level. Yeah. yeah. That dude's like running all the time. Even on his interviews, he's running. <laughs> He's insane. Can you imagine being insane. David Goggins' cameraman? <laughs> oh, God, he's going to be exhausted. <laughs> he's run. either exhausted or his four liters out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the bicycle, David, if you don't mind. Well, his wife, Jennifer Kish, 
does a lot of the filming. Oh, I, she does I did work with them and stuff. Yeah, wow. and she and she's a badass herself. I'm sure, she is. Really? Bad, yeah, she, I, she, you can't marry a fucking uh, no, lazy no, person. No. If She'd you're be up about running it. miles in soft, literally in sand, on a beach at like you know six a.m. Like when we would Rages. go someplace like for a work event. Yeah, so she so she's probably pacing with him, which is pretty insane. Just what to a, know that two people could find each other like that. What a maniac. That's crazy stuff. No, I'm all about, I like a regimen. I love to work out and stuff like that, too. But it's, boy, I tell you what, that, that, in, that's, in, that's, I can't do it. You like when you're done. I love being done. I love when I'm done. I love being done. <laughs> Nothing kicks ass like finishing. Being done is fucking the best. But the, the, the name of his re- recent book is Never Finished. <laughs> right. Wow. I didn't write the foreword to that one. <laughs> Never Finished, dude. <laughs> The guy runs nothing less than 12 miles every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He stretches for two hours at night and meditates. Like, I don't, str- I can't get myself to stretch for five minutes. It would change my life if I were to stretch for five minutes. <laughs> I stretch for two minutes the first night, one minute the next night, then it's back to fucking waking up and uh, hobbling out of bed. Well, I remember we were saying uh, that like, the old guy on campus is 25 or whatever. Yeah. When I was 28, which is peak. I thought I was an old Navy SEAL, and I would tell the young guys, look, man, I the way I run is I like to start off slow, and then I gradually taper off. That's how we're going to do this. I, I like to end where I started, and that's a good day. And I don't mean to sound like a complete piece of shit. But... Yeah. There's got to be all kinds of people in the Navy SEALs, too, the fucking high performers. Well, and the there are. Who are there, there are different groups, too, and, and uh, I'm probably making a little bit light of it because we do some pretty serious shit. Of but course. There, but there are the guys that I'm thinking of that... that, that Seriously, or can keep that intensity up all the time, and it's some guys will say, "Yeah, I want to work out like this guy." I'm like, "You're gonna die. You, right. no, like sooner, like you're gonna die anyway. You're you're just if making you're not it shorter. wired that way naturally. Yeah. That's nice. gonna just some people down. need to rest. You need to recover." Well, I made a, a video that struck a nerve with some people where I, you know, so I was sitting talking to myself, but I'm two different people in the video. I'm like, "How do you wake up at 5 a.m. every day?" And the other person goes, "I don't know. My body just wakes up naturally. I can't go back to bed." And then I go, "Oh, you have crippling anxiety." <laughs> I don't have that. There's a, there's a word for that. <laughs> yeah. It's I a just, term, actually. I just wake up at 5 a.m. and my adrenaline is spiked through the roof because I'm thinking about all the shit that could go wrong during my day and I don't want it to happen. Oh, okay. I don't. <laughs> that's why I don't wake up at 5 a.m. Shit. I'll, 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 I'll roll over and like, shit, did the guys I hire show up to clean that shit? <laughs> <laughs> better, better go check. Ooh, get the slippers on. Yeah, if I got something to do, I can wake up. But if I yeah. got nothing to do, what am I, I, you know? I don't, And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No. I don't think so either, but I have to tell myself that so I don't kill myself. Uh, <laughs> mental illness. When my mom tells me to take my schizophrenia medication, dude, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. <laughs> <laughs> I had a fucking good time last oh, night picking these memes oh, out. That's, oh, that's a good one. You're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. <laughs> what was that line from Role Models? What the hell are you bitching about? I had to spend the afternoon with Gleek Lock and the Flutie Deuce. <laughs> You're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. Oh my god, <laughs> I have I, I have what I think is refer. It is not. I don't know if there's a term for it, but like mental illness hypochondria, where like for a time he made a joke that I thought I had Down syndrome. I really did. When I was like 16, 17, I became convinced that I had Down syndrome, and I didn't know because I was retarded, and nobody <laughs> would tell me because they loved me, and I wouldn't understand anyway. So one day I asked my mother, I'm like, hey, mom, would you think, like, would you say that people think I'm, like, slow? And she goes, what? No, what are you talking no, about? No, you're my special boy. <laughs> oh, my God, you're my special boy. <laughs> that would have sent him into you know a spiral. Oh. I would never have recovered from that. For sure. You know, my wife said that to me today. Oh, I'm God. her special boy. <laughs> I think I have a text. <laughs> I'm showing. Oh my God! Well, that's actually why we invited you on, Robert. We've been hired by. the... We wanted to tell you this is an intervention. Yeah, yeah. You, this is the this first is Down Syndrome Navy Seal. This you is have why Down you're syndrome. here. <laughs> a rock star, but also a special. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta show George. Yeah, you didn't actually kill Bin Laden. It was Look just. A, but also a special boy. And then I said, I asked her, "But what's my name?" And it came up, "What's my make?" I'm like, "God damn it, I am special." <laughs> my make. Thanks a lot, Apple. What's my what's make? My make Dodge. <laughs> Dodge special boy. I think I think that uh, the software gets there, and I think autocorrect fucks with you too. Of course. I think they, they say shit. So you, and I think it's real when you hit send, and then you see it switch to double sided dildo. Or what, what the yeah. Fuck was the, what? I'm sorry, Grandma. Yeah. I didn't mean that. They're just <laughs> fucking with us at this point. They. They. Fucking NASA. Work on the damn dustbuster. Steve Jobs. I mean, they they can. They own us, dude. Yeah. They got us. What, what was? What did I see recently? Oh, um, I was thinking about this. The pyramids, right? Pyramids. They don't know how they made them. They can't figure it out, whatever. 
if they discovered an iPhone in fucking 3,000 years and it was intact, they'd have no fucking idea how it was made. Nate Bargatze has a, a great bit about being able to time travel. He's like, I'd go back to the 20s. He's like, I'd say they have satellites, and they'd be like, what's a satellite? You know, I wish I, I didn't even say that. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. We have, <laughs> we have computers. How have, do they, I don't know. How Great, do they, how does it work? How do they work? I don't know. He goes, I'd probably be a waiter in the 20s. I think I'd be doing worse in the 20s than I am now. <laughs> how does it work? I don't know. No fucking clue, dude. So the, like, we, <laughs> we said a couple of episodes ago, like the Egyptians probably f- left what they consider to be like dummy-proof instructions in the hieroglyphics on the wall. No doubt about it. And we're just like... Cat fucking a, a, a penguin? I don't know. Like what? And they're like, no, like no, no. They'll get it. They'll get it for sure. They'll There's get no it. way they can fuck this up. And then we get it, and we're like, how did they do this? How did they build these pyramids? I'd be a waiter. <laughs> be doing worse than that. <laughs> I know everything's gonna happen. <laughs> Stand-up comedy hasn't been invented yet. Like, what are you gonna do? You know, who's the president? Who's oh, who's the fourth oh, who's president? The, oh. uh, Lincoln? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's, who's coming up. No clue. No memory. It's just dumb. Living it, now. It, it, dumb. it reminds me of the movie Stripes when John Candy's walking on the bus and he's like, how's it going, Eisenhower? <laughs> I have no fucking idea who the guy is. Got a little bit of a weight problem. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. With a, with a couple of pizzas. I miss John Candy, dude. Every time a picture of him comes up, like, I Oh, John I, Candy's I a bad Really, person. he was, I, I didn't really appreciate him when he was alive. I was too young. But God, he was such a lovable fucking actor. Everybody loves John Candy. I mean, he if he had social media, he'd probably be split down the middle 50-50. You know, so I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, brought, I wrote a second book and I actually brought it for you. Oh, you did? And you know how everybody has a, a quote from somebody? Yeah. I quoted John Candy from the movie Canadian Bacon where it says, Gentlemen, there's a time to think and there's a time to act. And this is no time to think. <laughs> oh, I like it. Yeah, I, brought, I, brought, I would have brought two. I'll bring one next yeah. time. Oh, that's uh, hey, I'll bring one tomorrow. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> be back here at 10 uh, but, 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 uh, As man, long as we all promise that. to wear the same shirts. You'll be back at 10 Always. 10 Never taking this off. Um, John Candy, dude. Uncle Buck. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Like, I fucking... He's, him and John Ritter, who my mom convinced awesome. me Three's Company was TV for adult mentally challenged people, so I never was able to watch it when I was a kid. <laughs> I mean, he, he I had a dream about him after he died, and I was like, wait, I fucking love John Ritter. He's the best. He's so fucking funny. Yeah, the sincerity on both those guys. Yeah. Uh, just, I heard a good story about John Candy um, when the 49ers were in the Super Bowl, the famous drive, and, and uh, Montana threw the catch to Dwight yeah, Clark. Yeah. And I guess they had like 80 yards to go final drive. And, it, you know, I don't care who you are, you're getting adrenaline and butterflies. And I guess in the huddle, J- Joe Montana to calm his guys down, looked up in the crowd and goes, hey, guys, look, that's John Candy. To right. calm them down. Really? And it was right there. Just, and everyone's kind of like, oh, I'll be down. Okay, what were we? Yeah. I love that's that guy. Cool, and even that it's a, not a true story, that's a great story. Yeah, it puts things in perspective. Yeah. Just his presence is so calming. He's, he's, we're going to win this game. Yeah, what so could go John wrong? Candy. That motherfucker's here. He's here. Clark's going to catch this pass. 100%. <laughs> this is a, a meme from an account called Pretty Cool Tim. <laughs> Me checking my taco, my bag of Taco Bell to make sure they didn't order, uh, forget any of the 25 items I ordered. <laughs> just, Which are all the same, just in different <laughs> shapes. Yeah. It's all tortilla meat and, you know. Yeah, a couple cylinders, a few hexagons. Look at that face. Yeah. <laughs> he looks great. That's what I look like on top. <laughs> what she sees. Yeah, oh, what she sees. Put a suit on her. That's a congressman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> George Santos, talk about post Taco Bell. <laughs> Have you guys ever ordered food and been insulted by the amount of silverware they give you for it? <laughs> Chinese, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does seem to be too much. 13 chopsticks? Yeah. Okay, I guess I'm fat. It's just me, but okay. <laughs> either, either I'm fat or I'm dumb because I can't figure them out. I don't, uh, we don't need four forks. It's just me. Wild ginger, sorry. Sorry to fucking trick you. A lot but. of sauce, too. Yeah. And some places don't give enough sauce. Mm. And you can't even fucking, you can't even make the alteration on, on DoorDash. Because oh. they're like, listen, you fat fuck, if you're not going to drive here, <laughs> you're not telling, you're, you're, not, not, you're not coming back here for the sauce. You're not, <laughs> <laughs> if you're not coming for the meal, you're definitely not calling for the yeah, sauce. You're bro. eating a dry. And, and if you do get here, I think I, I think I got you. Yeah, yeah. We No, we have sauce. <laughs> We just know you're a piece of shit. We have plenty of sauce. Uh, the sauce is. I, hey, I'm just not. I'm not ripping off closers. Mr. Taco yeah, Bell because you're lazy ass. Sauce is a reward, <laughs> you know. 
<laughs> for sauces are a reward, not the journey. Yeah, you get you get what you get. <laughs> Fucking, we fucked up your order. There's no way to. That could be it. the new model Taco Bell. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't stop anybody from buying it. That's delicious. No, it wouldn't. They should just do some kind of random order when you when you get there. Like they don't even we we don't take orders here anymore. <laughs> you just get this. You get an order of bag size. I'll take D. Yeah, it'd be so much more convenient. It would be. No one would complain. And I mean, it's, and Taco Bell, it's, it's going to be good. Yeah, you go. Well, I didn't order this. <laughs> oh, I didn't want Pretty sour good. cream. Listen, you fat fuck. <laughs> it's better with sour cream. Oh, you don't like creamy things? You yeah, fat bastard. You're, and you're eating Taco Bell. <laughs> the Boston cream donut with wipe meat off your in it. chin. No, not that one. I try. <laughs> <laughs> He got sauce on the fourth chin down from the second chin. Peter North level sauce. Oh, yeah. God. That's how they should serve you the sauce. You got to do a, your personal you bukkake it. video. Like, like a fucking, <laughs> right, like in like a the hibachi. Uh, hibachi grill. Hibachi grill. I am the volcano. Imagine Peter North as a hibachi cook. Oh, man, he'd never stop squeezing it. <laughs> People would be gargling it. And they, they got to make the tables longer, how much though. tuna does this guy eat? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> this guy sure does love the crab rangoon. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think we got the sauce in there? <laughs> oh God, that's gross! I'm gonna throw up. Uh, where are we? Where do we gonna? We're, we'll probably wrap things up here. Oh, this is a great one to talk about. Uh, girls getting DMs from old high school Becky's about pyramid schemes, and <laughs> guys getting DMs from old high school Kyle's about cryptocurrency. Me, who was weird in high school, so no one DMs me. Just <laughs> on the fucking on the fringe, not getting bothered by anybody. That girl. Order that girl DMing girl thing, girls DMing girls is a real problem in the female community. What are they doing? There, you get it. So, you if I, I tell my wife all the time, if you ever get a message from somebody who you haven't heard from in years and it, the first two words are hey girl or whatever, Ooh. like something, you know, yeah, let's weird, grab coffee, do no. not open it, no. leave it unread because they'll never leave you alone. That's it's why they're a, reaching out. It's of course they're now that they lost seven pounds using whatever the fuck it oh, is. Oh Jesus, they're gonna sell it to you. Yeah. They're on their weight loss journey, their fitness journey. They want to coach you. Their beach body coach, Mona V, fucking acai juice, whatever it is. Yep. And they want you to work for them because they are the ones who figured out that the key to financial freedom is having other people earn you money. They figured it out. Oh, that's horrible. That's they, yeah. They can't believe it. The key to financial freedom is, yeah, you can make a little money on your own, but you really got to get other people to the work with you. The key to financial freedom. Yeah, that's how business works. You can only leverage yourself so much for per hour. You're one person. You get other people to work for you. Employees, it's called a business. It's called owning a business, except you don't make 1.5% profit like you do in a pyramid scheme. Right. <laughs> and everyone else makes all the money. Yeah, you kick it up. Recruit. You recruit for people. I remember having a great conversation with a guy one time in Barnes & Noble. We were at the magazine rack. I fucking said something about one of the magazines, and we started talking. We were talking for like 15 minutes. He's like, you're a cool guy, man. We should hang out. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And he's like, would you like to experience financial freedom? And I was like, oh, God. Oh, no, I would not. No. Thank you. No. I'm, I'm actually all set on finance. I'd rather be poor. Uh, that's I'm, like the new zombie movie. That's what, that's what the zombie movie should be about. <laughs> no, it's not like, you. Like you're fucking, scheme. Yeah. Your own wife turns to you. <laughs> hey, it smells like CK1, but it's not. Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> and if, run. You, if you sell it, <laughs> you'll be free. If you pay $400 a month to own $100 worth of product oh. and get other people to do that, you can make a nice living, seven, 800 bucks a month. Yeah, easy. That's not financial freedom, you dumbass. Oh, that brings to, oh, the, the DMs on the social media. Hey, stranger. Yeah. What? Hey, hey, stranger. Say, <laughs> hey, girl. Hey, strangers. Hey, girl. Same thing. Do not fucking write me about that shit, please. Thank you very much. And it doesn't stop, though, too. No. That's in the algorithm. You're getting it in your, your emails. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the bots on Instagram are, you know, it's a lose. they're the zombies. I mean, it's a losing war. I have people comment on some of my photos yelling at me about how many bots they're, yeah. they're getting. If you, I'll, I'll give $5,000 to the first guy who says help to I was like dude I didn't do that yeah yeah I just put a cool so many up. bots uh, there, yeah, there's comments yell. in this bot section <laughs> I'm giving five grand to yeah. the first yeah. person who DMs me the word depressed what and then it's always me depressed what, <laughs> where's my money <laughs> I've seen people respond <laughs> to them oh god don't I'm like you are the that, that's fucking the, that, problem yeah you're right yeah I'll block them yeah I'll, I, I, I don't even block the bots because it's no point it's going to be a new account in two seconds yeah. anyway yeah. I block the people who keep the bots alive do not feed the bots that's what feeds the bots yeah yeah they must be making money. I mean, they have someone to. Someone has to be someone. Well, yeah, it's the, it's the guy It's the guy at Barnes & Noble. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's a billionaire. Why does everyone always go to the bathroom after watching my stories? <laughs> 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 
Do you remember that? <laughs> oh man, what a great fucking what a great episode. I forgot which episode it was, but some guy who caught he, he told me he's on YouTube, he comments, he goes, I'm starting at episode one, I'm watching all the episodes in a row. And then he told me about that it's like when you go down a meme rabbit hole. You get to know us, you get to know our sense of humor. And there was one episode where we were talking about if bots were like in real life and you're at a comedy club just bombing. And somebody screams out from there, I'm DMing five grand to the first person who DMs me the word depressed. <laughs> it's worse than silence. In the middle of your set. In the middle of the set. <laughs> after a joke doesn't land, yeah, nobody I'm, laughs. I'm D- Why does everyone always go to the bathroom after watching my stories? What? what did I'm you so just horny. Say? Watch me masturbate. <laughs> what did she just say? Masturbate? Masturbate. Getting around the spelling. Exactly, because yeah. you block masturbate. That's right. And you and masturbate. They get the point. I'm gonna masturbate. I guess I could watch her. They're they're I was yeah, gonna anyway. Catching on to that, two people are bleeping out other words and they're making them up. That, oh, that's okay. And that's why they say five grands instead of five grand. Oh, right. Yeah, you got to block yeah. grands too. But Instagram, in their defense, has made it very easy to because like part of the problem is that you see a, a comment you want to block or a word in a comment you want to block. And then you just keep scrolling. You see five, six, seven. You're not yeah. going to write them down. And then you get there and you're like, what was that fucking word again? You have to go through all the things. So when you're in the comments, you click the, the three little lines yeah. and manage custom word list is right there. Okay. So you can just go back and back and back and back. Remember three or four at a time, block them, write them fucking down, different variations. My blocked word list is a, 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 the dictionary, basically. Yeah. You sure. can't write anything. No one can get through. <laughs> you can't write anything <laughs> on my page. I used to have the word, words like bald box. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Call me fucking bald. Just stop trying to trick people into sending you money on my page. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that more and more, it's, and it's just annoying. Because you, you know, did you delete them, or what? Are you, what are you supposed to do with? Them? If I delete them, is there more of them going to show up? Or what so are... I thought there's this guy, Black Tip H. His name is uh, Josh, I believe. He's a fisherman down in Florida. He's always doing crazy fucking trips with people. Mm-hmm. I talked to him, and he's like. You know, it really does actually help if you delete the comments because then the bots, the people who program the bots will stop programming them to comment on your page. And I did it for like a month and it made no difference at all really? in the amount of bots. Yeah, because you can't block them no. because it's – what I will do, I do this. The Forex traders, I was so skeptical at first, but then with this withdrawal, block skeptical, block withdrawal, block anything to do with money. But then also if they tag Diane Forex or whatever, yeah. I'll go to her – and block her and any accounts she may create yep. so that it's like, all right, I'm, I feel like I'm making a difference. I'm probably not. It's a losing battle. Yeah. You're not going to beat the bots. I just, you know, invest with Vivian. Hopefully she's making a buck or two. <laughs> they must be making money. Someone has dude. to at some point. They, nobody would pay for these because these things cost money. Yeah. You, they, they're not free to fucking have 3,000 bots commenting on all, all posts all the time. So they must be making some money. But how much could they be making? I might look into it. They're selling lists. It must be. It's just so. Yeah. Now, are, they, are, are the haters bots too? A lot of those. Mm, uh, no. Could, but maybe so some troll bots. By, maybe. Yeah. By bot. When I say bot, I mean something that's programmed automatically yeah, to respond to a, mm-hmm. a specific page or a post. There are people who work for troll farms. Yeah. That any word pops up, okay, they're constantly yeah, searching okay. for words on Twitter, and they'll just come and combat it and. That's really the worst kind of because it's not a bot; it's a, it's an actual human sowing hatred among a population. That's really fucked up. That, that we, we got that uh, a couple of weeks ago because I said that uh, one of the things I like for home defense is a pump action shotgun. That's what I said. And all of a sudden, I don't know anything about guns, and I've obviously never been to combat. And there's all these hate and hate and hate. Like my wife's reading some of them. I'm like, honey, they're not yelling at you. First of all, right? Chill out and. We both know I know how to use other guns. I just I happened to say I like this once and just got na- and then it stopped. Well, that's what I have. For, that's that what I have for, for home defense: a pump action shotgun. Yeah, that's brilliant. Because when I cocked that thing, that's exactly what I said. I want to hear feet scurrying out. I the thing that I said I think on my podcast that people didn't like is I said um, <clears throat> it's a deterrent that when you pump it, like if, when I was a professional housebreaker in her at SEAL Team Six, if I heard a <laughs> shotgun, I'm going to find a different way in the house. That's fucking serious. And so they just caught, started calling me a pussy and all this stuff. I'm like, guys, I'm, look, I know that you're a tough guy. I'm not talking about a SWAT team. I'm talking about a crackhead who's trying to steal my watch. I want him to hear it. I'm not trying to kill everyone in my house. Just right. I want him to fuck off. Well, there's people That's who it. have this, this <clears throat> glorified idea of who they would be in certain situations. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, I want to fucking kill somebody who breaks in my house. You break in my house, you fucking die. It's like, well, 
do you really want to shoot them and watch the blood gurgle yeah. out of their mouth uh-huh. and hear them die? And deal with and it. And then, then yeah. their body's here, yeah. Or would you rather have them run out and yeah. you're safe anyway? Yeah. And they're not going to come back to your house. They're crackheads. That's that's exactly what I'm saying. It's, I don't I don't need to kill everyone. I fucking... But yeah, the couch commando thing is... Uh, it's, re- it's real, but once you get hit with one of them too, they all just attack you. Well, could they almost hang out? I think it's a Reddit page or something like that. Yeah, no, they I'm just kidding. zap they're, it up. They're just fucking losers. <laughs> so losers hang out with losers. There's do nothing people who, I, I do feel for people who you know, have, they go to work, they work at a job that was given to them by somebody in their family because they only know seven people, they only know three other people that work at the office. They go to work, they come home, they put on TV, and their entertainment is upsetting. True. People who have actually and they do love the response, don't they? They love it. I mean, imagine. If you could, in the 80s, comment on someone's post that was famous and get a response. Yeah, it's true. I would have done it. Absolutely. For sure. It's a platform. For Arnold Schwarzenegger, you're, a platform. you're small. Yeah, you that's look not like, how you lift. Yeah. That's not the right way to lift. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Sorry. You know I'm they Arnold. Were cor- right? They will correct everything, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the wrong form. You shouldn't be doing reverse. Uh, oh, really? Yes, okay. thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the tip. Calling so, you a pussy is hilarious. So tr- yeah, I know. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, they do. Like, this guy's obviously never been to combat. Truly, to close oh. things out, Louis C.K. recently just sold out Madison Square Garden, yep. right? And uh, fucking, I mean, very funny story. I was with Adam and my buddy or me, you. Okay, we were at the Comedy Cellar, and this was right after. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This was right after Steps. Louis C.K. Maybe like an hour, uh, not an hour, like a year or two after his whole thing came yeah. out. And this girl was there by herself with a tiny little sign. She didn't even put the effort into getting a fucking oak tag piece of, you know, whatever. A little piece of paper that says, you know, Louis C.K. is a predator. He shouldn't be performing here, whatever. So I go to Adam. I go, I'm going to go talk to her. And I walk over to her and I'm like, hey, I, you know, I see you're upset. Can you, do you want to just talk? She's like, you're you're making me feel uncomfortable and unsafe and you're being very aggressive. And then I took a step closer. I was like, no, 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 hold on. And she's like, please, (laughs) please, please. It's like a bear, like a wild bear attack. (laughs) And I go back to Adam and I'm like, well, that didn't go very well. He's like, yeah, bro, you're the fucking epitome of everything she hates in this world. What did you think was going to happen? She had your own sign. (laughs) Jacked, bald, white guy with a beard. Telling her, no, it's okay. Let me talk You're to you. You're going to be just fine. Would you? Sh- I want to shake your hand. <laughs> that guy. Have you ever wanted to have a conversation in your life? Come here. Talk to me. She's like, no. I mean, the whole. Did you read the sign? I just want to shake his hand. <laughs> oh, that fucking guy. That oh, guy. That's God. what he was. Yeah, that- he turned into the guy. <laughs> I just want to shake. I just want to shake your. I want to stroke your blue hair. <laughs> oh my God. So he recently sold out Madison Square Garden, bunch of shows. And it's like, people are still mad. It's like, dude, I mean, is this is the question, really, I have for people, not us, they, never us, so is them. Mm-hmm. What is the appropriate punishment for, a, a, you know, sexual inter- uh, misconduct? Like, a death sentence? Is that what they, like, is that what they want? This person to literally disappear, be exiled, go live on a fucking island with other predators? Like, is that, I'm asking, is like, is that really what you think should be the case? Because the guy is just, he sold out Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Obviously, there are people who are fans enough of his and imperfect enough and honest enough with themselves to realize, all right, the guy made a fucking big mistake, and what are you going to do? Kill the guy? Literally? Like, is that the kind of society we want to live in? Didn't he get punished? He was, he didn't get in trouble with the law, but his life was forever altered, for sure. Oh, no doubt about it. He's not, I mean, he's going to have that with him, forever. for sure. Um, but, but again, he's, he's selling out Madison Square Garden, which kind of tells everyone else, like, we're kind of over a lot. Well, what they say is like, well, you're perpetuating rape culture. You're saying that it's okay. Like, he fucking, first of all, if you know the story of what happened, he didn't rape anybody. He was weird and inappropriate with two people who were almost kind of willing, like they were laughing, but then after the fact, they were like, well, we don't, it was weird. Yes, it was weird. Yes, it was weird. I'm not saying it wasn't weird. I'm not saying it wasn't appropriate. I'm not saying it wasn't, um, he shouldn't have done it. But what I'm saying is, what is the appropriate punishment then? Like, you want the guy to just never, because I saw a video of some girl who was standing in front of Madison Square Garden talking about, you know, she was lampooning it. She's like, you know, I wish that guys who sexually assaulted women or were inappropriate just could live their lives. Like, it would be so weird if you could just never work again or whatever. And, like, behind her is the the image of Louis C.K. on, on MSG. Sold out five shows. <laughs> Sold out. 
Like, what do That's you a want? Pretty good venue. That is, yeah, not bad. Little, little, uh, little club. I've heard about. What, what do you want to happen? I just don't. I'm not asking you guys. I'm no, really no, I like, know. But just, it, and why is it up to you, by the way? They don't have an answer. They just want to yell about it. They just want to yell about it. I want to hear. Okay, what should we do? You. Get away from me. You're making this awkward. <laughs> yeah, please. You're sorry. You're making me feel uncomfortable. You well, brought it up. Yeah, you. <laughs> he thought he was going to solve it with a conversation. Yeah, I thought I was going to solve everybody. Yeah, you know, I'll, just, uh, I'll fix it. Hold on, everyone. That's I told I, him not to go. I go, dude, dude don't, don't, not, do, don't, do, it. don't do it. Don't do it. That's what I was well. going to do, but it didn't work. What are you going to do? We are the Meme Daddies. We're having fun. We had a great guest, Robert O'Neill. Thank you for having me. Fucking awesome, awesome time. Official, unofficial, official Meme Daddy here. Uh, I mean, official, I was going to say try host but we'll figure that out maybe yeah, you know we love it man i'm down fucking, i'm in come back and just hey, like 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 i said i'm i'm so good at doing nothing this is pretty much doing nothing i could do <laughs> as close to nothing as you can get this is doing nothing with a microphone that's yeah it really is looking at memes talking shit i mean like i said i didn't know what we were gonna do if you told me we're just gonna look at memes all day shit you could turn the cameras off i'll just sit here and stare at them it's fucking hilarious <laughs> we might do that when the cameras are off Third episode. that's Third it so all right, so thanks for watching. I'm your co-host, Tank Sinatra, Adam the Creator, Robert O'Neill, Jarrett on the boards, um, looking disheveled. I hope nothing happened. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, and we'll see, <laughs> we'll see you next episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.